Elizabeth Swan, do you take me to be your husband? I do! Great! Will Turner, do you take me? To be your wife! Sickness and in health! And health being left lightly! I do. As Captain, I now pronounce you! First of all, this video is 22 minutes long. Now, why is this a sin? Because this movie is almost three hours long, and Jeremy will continually criticize this movie's length, even though they made a video that's way too long. So instead of continually mentioning hypocrisy, I'll just throw on 10 cents right away for the repetitiveness. Sure, Disney, we have time for your meandering 30 second logo during this nearly three hour film. We'll wait. <sighs> Seriously, dude, no one cares about the logos. Hangman allow this asshole kid to keep singing instead of hanging him immediately for singing, or at least kicking him in the balls or something to shut him up. Well, in this very same scene, we find out that Cutler Beckett wanted them to sing because he knows that will call the Brethren Court to come together and then he can wipe them all out. I'm sure he told the hangman this. Thieves hold, thieves and wow, the movie goes full lay Miz before the four minute mark. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a cinema movie cliche. They've started to sing, so... Beckett needs to be told that the prisoners are singing, even though that's readily apparent via hearing. Something suspicious about this scene is that they play over the scene that tells us that Beckett wanted the prisoners to sing, and they don't play the audio. Meaning they know this, but they don't want their audience to know that they're lying. Well, guess what, Cinema Sins? I saw right through it. What makes you think she's alone? Well, the fact that up until you spoke, she was alone and stuff. Jeremy is a smart aleck. Also, maybe Barbosa heard that, but I'm wondering, if he was expecting Elizabeth to arrive here, why did he wait until she was in danger to show up? Maybe because she literally just arrived here? Not Hilarious third movie of a bloated Not Hilarious franchise finds time for this scene somehow. Did Jeremy just say this franchise isn't hilarious? Dude, have you never heard of Captain Jack Sparrow? He move. Please. That's racist, sexist, and coincidentally exactly what I was hoping he'd say, which makes me racist, sexist. Yeah, just out of sin. I think you know what I'm going to say. As one of the nine pirate lords, you must honor the call. Pirates have lords? I thought it was a pretty straightforward, casual version of a military, with a captain and a first mate. Pirate code? Yes, I buy that. Pirate lords and some kind of constitution that they have to obey? Not so much. I mean, that pirate code had to come from somewhere, right? Yep, this movie is having one of the so-called good guys get a chuckle out of looking up Elizabeth's skirt. Because creeping and peeping is fun. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd call Rigetti a good guy. He's a pirate for Pete's sake. You are so fang, the pirate lord of Singapore. Much needed exposition. Which you definitely would have seen this movie if they didn't give you this information. Elizabeth Swan. There was more to you than meets the eye, isn't there? No, that's Optimus Prime you're thinking of. Jeremy makes a pop culture ref- What is it you seek in Davy Jones' locker? Jack Sparrow. He's one of the pirate lords. Well, isn't that sh convenient and completely made up for this movie? What do you mean by that? Are you talking about the fact that the previous two movies never mentioned this? If so, answer me this. When would they have mentioned it? The Brethren Corps has never been important to the story until now, and that's why they're just now mentioning it. And considering Jack Sparrow is one of the most famous pirates in history, I think it makes perfect sense that he would be a pirate lord. Now, when they hatched this plan, they knew the spaces between the floorboards would allow for a coordinated sword tossing. I mean, think about the planning here. How many times did Barbosa go into this room, finally deciding, you know what? Swords through the floorboards. It's almost too easy. Or maybe Barbosa has been here before. I mean, there's no reason not to assume that. How did this many British soldiers manage to get to the other side of a f***ing dressing chamber divider without any guards spotting them? Maybe they just killed the guard? You know what? Even if historically soldiers did this in every situation, I'm going to sin history. Well, this is stupid. Jeremy just admitted that it's possible that the writers are being historically accurate, and yet he decides to sin it anyway. 
That's like sending Fruitvale Station for having a cop kill Oscar Grant, even though that's actually what happened. An odd coincidence, isn't it? That you two ran into the same secluded area away from the battle that Beckett's main man Mercer just happens to be in right now, so that he can overhear key information he needs to propel the plot? Um just because coincidences are in a movie doesn't mean it's automatically worse. Seriously, what does this matter? Coincidences happen all the time in real life. Funky and a parrot team up to validate this movie's three hour runtime. Jeremy points things out on the screen, cliche. Pirate Wilhelm. Are you serious? Did that sound like the Wilhelm scream to you? You know, this sound? I'm sure there must be a good reason for our suffering. Character speaks for the viewing audience. For you. You mean for you. I mean, a majority of the comments on this very video say that they love this movie, myself included. Why don't that Obey woman just bring Jack back the same way she brought back Barbosa? Because Barbosa was only dead. You're right, Tia. How stupid it is for them to think just because you did one impossible thing, you could do a completely other impossible thing. Okay, I'm fairly certain you would have said the same thing that Pintle said if Tia Dalma didn't address it. Person can bring pan himself. It might make me sexist or racist, but I do not care about one word coming out of this woman's mouth. How does that make you sexist or racist? Maybe it's just because you don't care about the character herself? Was anybody thinking that this was racist or sexist? In some say it signals when a soul comes back to this world from the dead. So a green flash means someone's come back into this world from the dead. Question though, did those people also have an entire ship full of people looking for them, complete with these rare navigational charts to help them get out? Or did they get out on good behavior? Uh, yeah? Why are you saying this as if that sounds unlikely? Do you know how long boats have been around? Pirates of the Caribbean, the day after tomorrow. Jeremy makes a pop call. Also, he's technically playing that organ with his face. I'm just saying. Jeremy points things out on the screen, cliche. Why is this movie three hours long? Because the director insisted on every single establishing shot being a 10 second orgy of nothingness. You do realize that's the point of this particular shot, right? For certain you have to be lost to find a place that can't be found. Sure, sure, I get it. But you could also just be lost in a place that's nowhere near where you need to be. Besides, how in the world did people who came through here before not map this place out? You literally just showed a clip of Barbosa saying they need to get lost in order to find a place they're going to. How would they have mapped it out? 19 seconds of black screen. Jeremy points things out on the screen. Pretty obvious the thought was, you know what's better than Jack Sparrow? Do Jack Sparrows! And why should we stop there? You're saying that like it's a bad thing. Almost seven full minutes of nonsensical Jack Sparrow afterlife bullshit that means absolutely nothing to anything. Or the movie's establishing that Jack has been in this place for a long time and the amount of damnation he's going through to start imagining a crew of himself. This is called world building. It's a Jack. Is closer than you think. Well, that was easy. Also, how do you sail the boat to Davy Jones' locker and run right into Jack? Is he the only person in this purgatory? How are they not running into millions of people right now? Okay, I could be wrong here, but I think since you see those crabs go under Tia Dalma's dress, and she is a sea god, and she later transforms into millions of them, the movie's implying that she sent the crabs to bring the Black Pearl over the shore. Four of you have tried to kill me in the past. One of you succeeded. Oh. She's not told you. Yeah, for some reason. Even though it's been months, maybe even a year since it happened. Jeremy, you already mentioned this back in Sin 47. You mean they're still giving each other the silent treatment after he saw her kissing Jack in the last movie? You mean she hasn't once explained herself? I guess when you do tension for a movie, those things happen. You wouldn't be padding the Sin count now, would you? What are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What are you doing? Skip. Sitting this scene is worth 10 cents. Is Jack allowed to wander around the beach while these people were relegated to the water like they're in the dead marshes? Because Jack wasn't killed. He was struck at a place between life and death. These people were. It's my father. We made it back. Okay, sending this sh for her dead father being one of the six dead person rowboats close enough to the parole to make out faces. That's a deadly coincidence. So what? Elizabeth. Are you dead? Tia just said that those dead people only see them as ghosts, so why is he reacting right now? Is it so she and we would feel a lot better about his death? Because he assumed Elizabeth was dead? That was easy. I learned that if you stab the heart, yours must take its place. Wow, this dead guy just dropped a fantastic plot point on the main characters as he's being carried into the unknown. Just imagine if they didn't see him in that sea of dead people. You do realize this is crucial information that we, the audience, need to be aware of, right? Right? 
Now water. Why is all with the rum gone? Classic Pirates of the Caribbean. Hands on hips, shaking my head. Just like when the Birdman pointed this out in the Dead Man's Chest video, Jeremy sends these movies for having a running gag, even though CinemaSins are filled with running gags. Far outside Davy Jones' locker, Jack hears and sees literal tiny Jack Angel demons offering conflicting advice. What the f***? Did you really assume that the locker created those other Jacks? I mean, I would have agreed with you, but since we now see Jack imagining these tiny ones, and then later in the same movie, he imagines other Jacks inside the Flying Dutchman, then the movie is telling you that Jack imagines himself all on his own. The Dutchman must have a caption. Whenever the movie is stuck, you can rest assured it will find a way to waste time. Um, no. This scene is right now setting up Jack's motivation to stab Davy Jones's heart so he can take over as captain and become immortal, which then leads to the scene where he decides not to so he can save Will after Jones stabbed him. This scene is not wasting time, unlike this video. Come sunset, it won't matter. Not sunset. Hallucination ex machina. Jeremy misuses Deus Ex Machina Ex Machina. We're rocking the ship! I don't need to ask questions, seems like a great idea. If there's anything Gibbs has learned as Jack's first mate, it's that you don't ask questions and simply just trust that Jack has a plan. Do all the people who have ever escaped Davy Jones' locker did this? That doesn't seem possible. What if a smaller crew came to save someone and couldn't rock the boat? I guess they're screwed. How are they supposed to know that, though? Also, while I'm at it, who first learned to do this? Because someone solved it completely on their own. They got their crew to rock the boat willingly on the off chance it would work. I mean, sure, these are interesting questions to think about, but the problem is that's not a sin of this movie. If the movie was about the first people who journeyed in Davy Jones' locker and created the charts afterwards, then we would have had the explanation. But that's not the story that this movie is trying to tell. Telescope measuring contest. And that's ten more sins for sinning this scene. Yeah, but do they somehow have dry gunpowder? Earlier, everyone was trying to shoot each other and couldn't because the powder was wet. That would presumably include all these pirates from Singapore, right? Am I missing something? Yes, that pointy thing. And if Davy Jones were to learn of your survival? How does he not know this already? Shouldn't some disturbance in the force alert him to locker escapes? Well, since Jones isn't aware of Jack's escape, then that obviously means no. He can't sense those kinds of things. Send this pestilent, traitorous, cow-hearted, yeasty codpiece to the brink. Jack Sparrow, lover of all things scoundrel and pirate, is so mad at Will for having ulterior motives for rescuing him, he undoes years of friendship, despite having himself double-crossed Will a nigh uncountable number of times prior to this. Do, do you know how much Jack loves the Black Pearl? That was literally his entire motivation in the first movie, getting it back from Barbosa after he mutinied against him. Dutchman ex machina. <sighs> I did not know. Know what? Which side you chose? I'm already annoyed that this asshole is still in these movies long after his storyline should have ended, but giving him a change of heart now a good guy arc is even worse. This guy's original motivation in these films was how bad he wanted to marry Elizabeth and sex her, and not in a romantic kind of way. But suddenly he's got heart. Yay, I guess. Wow. This might be one of the worst misunderstandings of a character I have ever seen. First of all, you mentioned his motivation was to marry Elizabeth in all these movies. That was his motivation for the first movie, yes, but you need to remember at the end of that movie, when Liz confesses her love to Will, he accepts that and allows them to marry. This is a beautiful sword. I would expect the man who made it to show the same care and devotion in every aspect of his life. This proves that Norrington doesn't love Liz just because she's hot, he truly cares for her as a person jump the dead man's chest and he loses his honor because he failed to capture Jack Sparrow and so his motivation in that movie was to get it back. That's why he fought with Jack and Will over Davy Jones's heart. Lord Beckett desires the contents of that chest. I deliver it. I get my life back. The dark side of ambition. Oh, I prefer to see it as the promise of redemption. Now in this movie, Elizabeth makes him realize that Cutler Beckett is an evil man, you know, killing her father. So this leads to Norrington having a change of heart and letting her and her crew escape. Will is killing dudes just so he can drop them into the ocean, and the birds will leave a trail for Beckett to follow. What's lost in all this is that Will is killing people just to leave trails. This cold-blooded motherfucker is a hero? It's almost like he's a pirate, and pirates aren't heroes. Elizabeth freaks the hell out over the death of a guy she just told could never earn her forgiveness. Shocked? Maybe. Upset? Sure. But she's acting like they were active lovers. Like this is Will or some shit. 
This very scene proves that Elizabeth actually does care about Norrington, though. As much as she thinks he screwed up, he is a good person on the inside. I admit, that's pretty damn funny. I'll knock a sin off. Why not? Jeremy just said that this scene is funny. Do I need to say any more? She pretended to love me. What am I doing with my life? Okay. Oh, was that it? There's no justification for why this particular scene is a sin? Well, all right then. She betrayed me! The tea drinking in this scene is a good substitute for eating apples. So the director said, take a drink of tea every time you say something to piss Davy Jones off. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. Yeah, just the fact that he had to force one of his running gags into this video should tell you how much he wants to pad the sin count. Pirates of the Caribbean, the desolation of Smaug. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference. I'm as content as a cucumber to wait until Sal Fang joins us. So Feng is dead. I'm pretty sure you didn't hear that. What? Elizabeth was like a few feet behind him. How would she not have heard that? You weren't there. Why weren't you there? The last two movies' plots almost entirely rely on young lovers having some sort of misunderstanding and never asking one simple question that could have fixed it all. Instead of simply asking this question in the first place, he decided to get pirate lords to bind her to a human body. You're saying this as if the answer would have solved everything. Do you know what Tia's answer was? is my nature. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have forgiven her either. By the way, how did nine pirate dudes capture a goddess in the first place? Did they put out Reese's Pieces and have her follow them into a trap? I bet they put out Reese's Pieces and had her follow them into a trap. Davy Jones literally tells Will that he showed them how to bind her. How was that not enough for you? So Johnny Depp says he patterned his Jack Sparrow in some way out of Keith Richards. So here he is, despite taking some of the mystique out of Depp's performance by actually casting the guy who inspired it, like a magician revealing a secret. Oh, come on. You're really sitting Keith Richards for showing up in this movie? As if that's not one of the coolest things ever? Also, am I really being asked to care about Jack Sparrow's daddy issues in the third f***ing movie? Because I don't, I can't, and I won't. What daddy issues? Literally the only thing Teague does in this movie is explain the rules about the Pirate King. What daddy issues are being explored here? Also, this whole voting thing brings up another horrible aspect of TV shows and movies that start explaining its mythology way too far. To the point that basically lawless characters have rules and kings and queens and all sorts of stupid shit that doesn't make any sense. It's like Twilight and True Blood when you find out vampires follow some sort of hierarchy. What a bunch of bullshit. Wait a minute. Didn't you send the earlier scenes for not explaining how Davy Jones' locker worked and asked a million questions on how the first people figured out how to operate it? Now you're sending this movie for digging too deep into the lore? Seriously, where is the line between not enough information and too much information? Sure, throw him the compass. This can't possibly help him against you later. It doesn't? Bravo! Well, here's some more of this shit. This movie is just downright exhausting. And this scene further proves my point earlier that Jack imagines multiple versions of himself on his own without Davy Jones's locker having anything to do with it. And look at that. You're ignoring it and not going back to cut that previous sin. Release you from your human bonds. Why is this guy able to say the words and it works? Doesn't it need to be a pirate lord? Hasn't everything relied on pirate lord bullshit so far? When did the movie say you needed a pirate lord to free Calypso? All they said was that they needed their nine pieces of eight. You will listen to me. Rousing speech time. Hey, one thing they forgot to do with this movie is give us a reason to care. This ain't William Wallace talking about getting their freedom and shit. This is a bunch of lawless pirates. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how the world is a better place if any of them survive. Actually, it is about freedom. Beckett's whole motivation is to take the pirates' freedom away and rule the world. This was established in the last movie and you somehow missed it. They will see free men! And freedom! Oh, shit. I guess I spoke too soon. So this is all about their freedom? To loot and plunder? Wait, so you do realize that this is what it's about? Then why didn't you... You know what? Never mind. Calypso. Is she in the sky now? Did she not just turn into a billion or so crabs and dive into the sea? What was the point of that shit? Calypso is a literal god. It is perhaps fitting that one of the final battles will take place in an abyss of rapidly rotating water because it simulates the effect of being in a and toilet. And Jeremy just sent one of the most genius settings for a finale set piece. That's worth 50 more sins. Well, we just leave Rich. Jack Sparrow once again Dr. Houses his way into a solution. Actually, this is a callback to the first movie when Will broke Jack out of his cell. I help build these cells. These are half pin barrel hinges. 
With the right leverage and the proper application of strength, the door will lift free. Did you just send one of the coolest moments in the whole franchise? Leave it up and we here today. Skip! And then I skipped and they just got to the kiss. I don't know, you guys finding this wedding during a sea battle thing funny? Yes. I mean, I might have to add 10 cents for this. You're adding 10 cents for this awesome shot and Will and Elizabeth finally getting married after this has been built up for three movies? Yeah, no. You're getting 10 cents. By the way, does Davy Jones have any reason to fear Jack's sword during this battle? We already had the pretty good joke where Norrington tried to stab him and Jones looked at him like he was stupid. So why doesn't he just bum rush Jack and take the chest? Probably test? because Jack is doing everything he can to push Jones' sword out of the way so he can't just do that? Dude, that's basic sword play. It's official. The first Pirates movie was good on accident. Since it's clear by this third movie, the creators have no idea what made the first one popular. Okay, fine. You don't like this movie. Teach their own. I understand that. But you're saying this over Jack swinging across the ship. What is wrong with this scene, and how exactly does it make the movie bad? You're saying this as if this is self-explanatory, but it's not. It's amazing how in all this confusing battle, things important to the plot just happen to be close to the heroes whenever they need them. Hold on, how is this battle confusing? You've never given a single example. William. Oh, now you remember this is your son. Nice timing, dickwad. Maybe it's because he saw the knife that he gave Will in the last movie? The very same knife that Will promised would pierce Jones's heart? I don't know, just a thought. So the Endeavor has cannons on both sides. Aren't they not going to get anybody in position to fire them? Are they just going to allow this to happen? This happens because they took over the Flying Dutchman and Beckett was so shocked that he realizes his plan won't work. You are sending a human for doing something human. On the wheel then, Mr. Turner. This ship had no one at the wheel until this moment. It's one of those ship jobs that isn't really necessary, which kind of makes Will a dick for giving that worthless, needless job to his own father. Ah, uh, yes, there was no one at the helm before this scene. You're right. Absolutely no one. It's at moments like these that I start thinking, wait a minute, all Calypso did was create an abyss and make it rain for a while. That's it. She was completely worthless to the story, despite her overall importance to the story. God, that was freaking awful. Did you just forget that she literally brought back Barbosa from the dead? Something Disney wishes they could do with this franchise.